Hi guys! Today I'm going to have a go at making a My Little Pony cake. I was really excited to see that Netflix are going to do a new My Little Ponies film. So I thought, why not have a go? I'm not sure if mine looks a bit scary, but <laughs> when I'm aiming for making Sunny one of the new little My Little Ponies. Let me know if you want me to make more My Little Ponies in the comments below, or if you want to see me make other things. So I'm going to use an 11 inch square drum to start on. And I'm just putting some buttercream on there to stick my cake on. So I've got a 10 inch cake. I've cut it in half. Now it is slightly frozen. I did keep this one in the freezer ready for using and it is still slightly frozen. So that's why it looks a different color in the middle to the outside. I'm just going to layer it with some buttercream in between. And it looks like I was wrong. It wasn't a 10 inch cake, guys. It was actually a 8 inch cake. See, my memory doesn't do me well, does it? So I printed off the pony. Sunny as a template because I thought it was going to be a little bit easier. Um, I cut it out, I cut off its neck and its ears and I'm just going to use that as a guidance for cutting around the cake and then I'm just going to make little marks where the eyes and the eyebrows sort of the top of the head goes so that I can then trim bits off the cake and sculpt it just a little bit. Don't throw away your off cuts, we're going to use those to build up areas of the face like the nose. A little bit more on there and we can also use it to build up the hair as well if we need some more cake at the top of the head. So I'm going to cut some out above the nose so the top part of the face is set a little bit further back than the cheek area and I'm cutting out some where the hairline is. I'm going to add some extra buttercream onto the top of the head so you can see the hair or the mane comes a little bit higher than my cake was so I'm going to just use those off cuts to build that up there. So once you're happy you've got it to the shape of the pony's face, you're going to cover the whole thing in buttercream. Now you can use buttercream or you can use chocolate ganache. I've been using a lot of the buttercream recently, mainly because I've not had time to make any chocolate ganache. The ganache just sets a little bit firmer than the buttercream will. So I'm using a flexible smoother to sort of scrape over the buttercream and shape it how I want it to be. You can pop that in the fridge for sort of 15 minutes, let it firm up a bit, and then you can always give it a second layer of buttercream to neaten up any uneven bits. We're going to use peach colour fondant to cover the face in. Again, I'll put links below to which one I've used. So once you've rolled it out, you're going to cover the face. You don't have to cover the hair area, and then just trim off any extra from around the edges. And I'm just going to cut out the mouth from my template so I can draw around it, just using my modelling tool. I'll roughly draw around it just so I know how big to make the mouth on the cake and I'm kind of opening it up a little bit with my tool using a balling tool just to press in at each side of the mouth the edges of the smile and I've got a tiny piece of pink I'm going to roll it to kind of an oval-ish shape or more like a leaf shape and I'm going to stick that in the bottom of the mouth for the tongue so using my template as guidance I'm going to mark gently where those nostrils go and then I'm going to go over them a little bit deeper so I've also cut out the eyes and I'm just going to mark on roughly where I want them to sit on the face. So just the bottom edge of them I'm just marking on. I'm going to cut the eyelashes off the eyes and I'm going to keep these for the templates for using later. But I'm just going to mark where they come to on the tops as well. I'm just pressing down lightly around that line just so that it dips in a little bit so that when we put the eyes in properly later they sit nicer on the face. So I've got a mix of a pink and a purple that I'm going to use for the mane itself. So it's a bit sort of streaky looking, that's fine. To be honest, you don't even really see the streaks later. I was hoping you would because I thought it looked quite nice, but you don't really see them later when I add paint and food colour into it. So I'm going to start pressing it up from the hairline or the top of the head upwards. Just trimming any extra off. So that's part of the purple that I used. I want to go a bit more purple for this side. Now I was aiming for half to be pink and half to be a little bit more purple, but again, when I added the food colour into it later, it all kind of becomes more of the same colour. <laughs> so we're going to put another strip on to cover a bit more of the mane, and then a couple of smaller pieces, like so. And one at this side too. So it's kind of a long sausage shape with a thin point at both ends. And you can add more of these if you want the hair to stand out a little bit more in some areas. Then what I'm going to do is run through and put lines all in the hair. So I'm just using a Dresden tool. You could use like the back of a knife, but I probably wouldn't use a knife because I think you're going to slice through it too easily. And have a look at an image of the pony so you can see what direction the hairlines go in. But it's kind of going from the forehead up towards the top of the mane. 
and you can press in deeper in some areas than others so it doesn't all look the same. Like the harder you press, the deeper the gap between those pieces of hair are going to look. So I let my cake fully defrost because you notice it was a bit shiny. So before painting, I just wanted to make sure the fondant on its face had dried out. And I was planning on airbrushing this one, but I couldn't find um, an orange airbrush color. I didn't have one in. So we're going back to using powders like what I often do. And I'm going to mix kind of a, a deep peachy color. So I've got some orange and some white and even a bit of kind of squirrel brown that we've mixed together. And then I'm just going to put a small amount around sort of the edges of the eye socket. Anywhere that you want to look a little bit darker in color now, we're going to add the shading too. I'm also going to add a bit of pink to the cheeks. Guys, the links for these colors will be below the video as well. I do sell them in my shop. You don't have to buy them from me, um, but I will link them to the products in my shop. They are all edible colors that we're using. And you can darken the forehead. Try not to darken the nose too much because that bit wants to look a little bit lighter than the rest of the face. You can go inside the mouth with a little bit of black or even like a dark brown. And also inside the nostrils as well. So I did the colouring of the face before putting the background colour on. Otherwise I tend to drop the powder on everything and my background would end up a really kind of mucky looking yellow. So now that the horse's head or the pony has been coloured in, we're just going to add some yellow fondant around the board. I'm just sticking it down with a tiny bit of water. I'm going to wrap it around the board. It's not going to go all the way around in one piece. So we're going to put two pieces on and just press it together. It'll be fine. One of the joins will hide behind the ear and one will join under the neck. And taking any extra off, I'm just using my rolling pin and kind of rolling over the edge and it's almost cutting through it at that point anyway. So I thought I'd add a bit of patterning to the board. I've tried to go over with a bit of yellow dust, like it's a brighter yellow. I don't think it shows overly well on camera. And you don't have to add all the colours to the board if you want, if you don't want, guys. Add in a bit of orange in that as well. I'm going to add some sprinkles. I think I'm going to pick out a variety of ones that are kind of yellow in colour. Maybe yellow and white. These round ones have got chocolate in the middle. But have a play around. You don't have to do this bit if you don't want, guys. I just thought I've got loads of sprinkles open, so I'm going to use them. And the big sprinkles are almost like Maltesers. So I'm going to take some more of that peach colour and we're just going to roll it out. And we're going to add that for the neck. So it's almost as wide as the head, but not quite. I'm going to try and put it at a slight angle. Cut any extra off from around the edge of the board. And we're going to need to add some dust to that just to make it match with the colour of the face. So I'm going to take some of my leftover peach colour fondant and we're going to make some ears. So we're going to start with two teardrops. I've kept them quite chunky. Um, I personally wouldn't eat all this fondant. I know that my sister definitely would because she loves fondant. Um, but sometimes for decoration, um, I need them to be a little bit chunkier. But you can always swap to modeling chocolate, guys. So if you don't like the taste of fondant, you can use modeling chocolate, which does actually taste nicer. So I'm pressed the rolling pin down in the middle of each ear and then I'm cutting off a little bit off the corner because it's going to be a bit big. And then we're just going to press it against the side of the head, up near the top of the head. This is where I'm not sure if my ears look a little bit elf-like rather than pony-like. And then I'm going to use some of the leftover hair colour and I'm going to roll it fairly thin and we're going to put a little curved piece that comes from partway down the face to behind the neck. And let's draw some hairlines in there. So this is part of the mane. And there is almost like a little plait bit that comes out the other side, but my board's not quite big enough to show the whole plait. So I'm just going to put like a tiny piece of it at the other side of the neck, just down there. And then we're going to use the same hair colour for eyebrows. So a nice thin piece, almost like a carrot shape, and just squash it down a little bit for each eyebrow. And then you can put some little hairlines in the eyebrow if you like to. You can leave it smooth if you prefer it without. So now I'm going to just make extra little pieces of hair, or the mane, that just flop down sort of at the front of the head. So you're going to join them into the kind of line between the hair and the forehead. And just bring them down over the face a little bit. And then she's got a couple of slightly longer pieces that come out from the side of the head. So let's just add a bit of colour now to the ears so they match with the rest of the pony. Adding pink in the middle of the ears as well. And I'm going to put a small piece of white in for the teeth. Make sure it's nice and thin at each side. And that's just going to go under the nose. And then I'm going to put some individual teeth in just by pressing in little lines. 
Now I'm going to add some more colour to the hair and I'm using gel colours now. These are my sugar flare ones. In fact, no, the pink is a pro gel one, but I will link below guys so you know what I've used. I've got a pink and a purple. I'm diluting them down quite a bit so that they run into the lines that we put for the hair and it should look a little bit darker in those lines. So you're going to do that all over the hair and then also a little bit on the eyebrows unless you like the colour of the hair as you had it which is fine you don't have to brighten it or deepen the colour. And next we're going to do some eyes. Using the template you can either cut round the template exact or you can use a circle cutter. I thought the circle might be fairly close to the shape but I'm going to cut the circle in half and then just nudge the shape of the semicircle around a little bit so it matches more with the template. So using a little bit of water, we're just going to stick these in place. Just using this little tool to sort of nudge it around a little bit. And they look just a tiny bit too big, I think. So I'm going to add a little line where I want the eyes to come to. And then I'm just going to add the black eyelashes from that line outwards. I want two black discs for the pupils. I'm using just the bottom end of my piping nozzle for that because it was about the right size. Pop them into each eye, cut anything extra off from the bottom that kind of overlaps onto the cheeks. And then I'm using a jade colour, uh, gel colour for the eyes. So I'm painting it on fairly thickly at first and then anywhere that I want to be a little bit lighter in colour, I'm almost brushing it back off. And you're going to do exactly the same on both eyes. And we want a tiny little oval of white in there. So a strip of black. Now make sure it's nice and thin at one end, going Thicker as it gets to the outer end, we're going to cut any extra off where it sort of meets the end of the eye. And then if you want more individual eyelashes, you can cut into it with some little scissors. Just make sure that you only use these scissors for cake decorating. If you want to go any darker, you can add a little bit of black into the eye as well. So just black food colouring in there. And then you just want to try and make the other one match. So there she is, all done, sunny. Let me know if you think I should make more of the My Little Ponies in the comments below, guys, or your suggestions with what else you'd like to see me make. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for weekly videos. Thanks, guys. Bye. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.